So, uh, okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jose Bato. I work in, in, in Red Hat and thank you everyone for coming to this presentation where I'm going to talk about uh, the title is uh, Tuning and Automating Telco 5G Containerized Workloads. I work as a part of uh, one team that is called Partner Workloads and Enablement and uh, together with other colleagues like Javier Peña who also uh, work on these uh, same uh, topics and he also helping me to prepare the presentation. We work uh, helping our different uh, telco partners in order to allow them to run their different telco workloads into uh, our platform which is uh, OpenSafe. Very quickly the agenda for for this session, I will do a very quick uh, introduction about the telco architecture and the different layers that we can find there. Just also to explain the different points where in Red Hat we are trying to help to this uh, to these partners. So uh, the idea is not only to enable uh, OpenShift to run the workloads, but also to provide for them or to help them with a solution to uh, manage all the clusters that they are going to have to manage mean not only deploying, but also doing automation, the uh, configuration, upgrades, etc. And how we prepare all these things together, uh, uh, we have uh, a set of different uh, OpenShift telco partners that allows, uh, that helps them to do uh, the different tuning that they have to do for, for telco. And finally, uh, I will talk about uh, a special configuration of OpenShift that is single node OpenShift. Pretty special because it's, it's a cluster but only one uh, node. And these clusters came pre-configured with uh, one special profile for these uh, partners. So how is this uh, architecture? So well, the easiest part is the part of the devices that are our mobiles that are connected to internet through uh, Intelco, what is now one radio access network I will mention very much during this presentation. Radio access network is divided at the same time into different layers. In the first one, we will find uh, the radio unit that are common antennas where our mobiles are going to be connected. And then close to these antennas or behind these antennas, we will have the first set of cluster or sites. Uh, and these are called distribution units. Distribution unit take the signal from the antenna and everything is collected into the central unit where we again have a new cluster and then the last uh, lay layer that is the packet core. Packet core is closer to internet and again here we have one new cluster. This time could be in a CPD or something like that while the central unit you can have one or several in different regions managing different distribution unit. So well we can use different OpenShift uh, cluster configuration from standard, compact, but the most special part is oh, Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know why now it's out of uh, this full screen. Sorry. Okay. So, okay, during the presentation, I will focus on the uh, radio access network and the distribution unit. We implement this with a single node OpenShift together with a management cluster uh, with an, a special profile that came pre-configured inside this, uh, this cluster, also using some special operators for telco and with a very uh, big uh, uh, requirement about scaling and uh, making the things reproducible. Why? Because uh, if we focus here in the distribution unit that we have said that is uh, closer or behind the antenna, you can imagine how many radio units or how many antennas these uh, partners are going to have, hundreds or thousands of new clusters that they need to uh, scale and they need to manage. Well, we usually say that telco war is different, but maybe we, everyone say the same from their partner or customer, but it's true and we will see later that we have to do uh, very low level uh, configurations. Also, we want to reach to the far edge the edge and the cloud using the same technologies and the same platform. And when I have uh, said before that we have very strict uh, requirements about the scaling and making the things uh, replicable. 
So how we make, because we not only need to make OpenShift enable, enable by, to, to run this class, to this uh, workload, but also we need to manage and administrate this huge amount of uh, clusters. So this is why we need to create a, a management cluster that is composed of a set of different technologies. Well, a management cluster is a cluster, an OpenShift cluster, or a Kubernetes cluster that manage other cluster, deploy, monitor, configure in an architecture similar like that because we are combining this together with GitOps and zero touch provisioning technologies and tools. So we have our Git repo, we have our GitOps where we define our infrastructure and configuration and this is managed by our hub cluster and we can deploy different sites for distribution unit, central unit or the packet core uh, part. How we will the manage cluster? We say that it's an OpenShift cluster, so the base layer is going to be CoreOS and uh, OpenShift. Then we are going to use uh, Red Hat Advance, uh, Advanced Cluster Management product or tool together with assistance uh, service that is the newer OpenShift installer to, well, to install the different clusters. We will see more. Later about that, then we have uh, op, uh, to do GitOps. We want to use GitOps combined with this, so we have Argo CD, and also a new operator, that is the Talm operator. This operator helps you about the lifecycle management for the configuration of your cluster, and we will see later the special needs that we, that we have. And then, of course, you can have monitoring or other uh, workloads that you want to have in your management cluster. Also, I'm talking about the uh, zero-touch provisioning and what is the scope of the different areas that we want to cover. We want to cover the whole lifecycle management. So in the day zero, we deploy our clusters together with this CTP GitOps uh, tooling and plugins that I will explain in another talk more in detail. Uh, you can define your infrastructure. In this case, you, de uh, you define your different uh, single node OpenShift. When these are deployed, you go to day one. Day one is still the cluster, well, the cluster is only deployed, still is not ready for telco, it's just single node OpenShift. And in day one, it's configured what we call the VDU or virtual distribution unit profile that are a set of operators with some configuration and some tuning that we will see uh, in a moment. In day two, is the, is the work of the partner, so they have a cluster where they can deploy their CNF or workloads. And of course, after that, in day two, we can still do more configuration, more upgrades, whatever, uh, using the same platform that is ACM, with our GitOps things, with our uh, CTP tools, etc., to do the, the, the configuration. Very quickly, because I, we will see this later, we, uh, with the CTP tools, we provide two new templates of custom resource definition that allow you to define the cluster and allows you to define the different configurations. This is just a screen capture of uh, ACM. ACM is not only a Wii, it's also a set of services that allow you to do all the stuff around uh, installing cluster, monitoring, uh, deleting nodes, whatever you need to do. I don't go in details with this because right after this talk, uh, I have another one where I'm going to go further about how we work in this uh, management cluster. But okay, let's say that we have this management cluster with thousands of distribution units, and now how we configure this? Because we said at the beginning that telco world is different. So we have OpenShift telco operators. That is what we configure in this day one. So as an overview, uh, we have a, our single node OpenShift. We want to make it virtual distribution unit into our radio axe network. So we have to create this video profile. Again, uh, we have OpenShift. It's true that it's OpenShift only with one node. Then we are going to use the telco operator, login, Local storage, well, local storage is not a special operator for telco, but it's there. And then we have the uh, node tuning uh, uh, operator and or uh, previous to 4.12 uh, performance add-on operator that allow you to do some customization. Then the SRIOB 
operator for networking, and finally, PTP precision time protocol uh, operator. All these operators together with the configuration allow us to convert the single node OpenSafe in something that can be a distribution unit. Finally, you can have other operators, other workloads, but uh, maybe the uh, most uh, relevant part is the application workload of, of the telco customer or the telco partner that is going to run. Okay. We are talking every time about distribution unit, virtual distribution unit, well, they are going to run bots with their virtual BDU implementation. And what is this BDU? Okay, so the, the BDU, what it's doing is to take in, okay, if we go again to the telco architecture, we have the, our mobile connected to the radio unit, sending a radio signal. The radio unit, here we don't do anything. The radio unit uh, converts the radio signal into the digital signal, and this uh, uh, reaches to our BDU pod. Each of these BDU pods, what are doing is processing the digital signal that is going to be sent to the central unit. How this is done? Okay, this is a loop. It's a process that is continuously working on this uh, signal processing. Interesting things here. Uh, these pods are working in this infinite loop uh, with very, very demanding. It means it will take one CPU and it will take this CPU for them and they will not share. So they will take the 100% of a CPU. You have four CPU, you can run four video pods that are going to be con constantly using the CPU. We need a real-time kernel for that. Um, this CPU process cannot receive kernel interruptions because they only want to do uh, signal processing and they don't want to be bothered. If you interrupt the CPU for whatever microseconds, this will make the distribution unit to uh, drop thousands of packets. That is not acceptable. Also, they need to access to the network car with a very high throughput of data, so they will access directly to the network car, not passing through, through the kernel. So for that, they use uh, DPDK that allow them with some special network cards to do this kind of, of, of things. So this kind of tuning is what is making this um, BDU a single node open shift. Especially is, is why I am focusing the presentation on this. And here uh, the, the, the previous explained the, the previous listed uh, operators came into action. The first one is the node tuning operator that allows you to create performance profile. In a performance profile, you can enable real-time kernel. In a performance profile, you can disable uh, kernel interruption for some CPUs. Uh, you can create few pages of memory for these processes, etc. And maybe the most interesting part is that you do the CPU pinning, where you say we will have some reserve CPUs. The reserve CPUs are going to be the CPUs that are going to be used by their operative system, by OpenSIF, or for other workloads. And then you, we have the isolated ones. The isolated ones don't receive kernel interruption and are going to uh, run the, the, the videos. More tuning. Then we have the PTP operator, precision time protocol. Uh, because they have uh, Mm, uh, to have synchronization uh, with uh, at level of nanoseconds, okay? So this protocol is in charge uh, is in charge of that. So if this is a server where you have a network card, uh, then you will receive in some way a GPS signal for doing this precision time protocol. One of the demos managed by PTP will take the signal from the uh, from GPS signal from a satellite, and it will uh, uh, take this uh, into the, well, it will synchronize the clock of the network car. Another demo will take this signal and will send it through the network to synchronize other cars that could be in the network or other cars that could be in the same server. And again, in other third time on, what it's going to do is to synchronize the uh, 
clock from the network card into the server hardware clock. And finally, the third operator, SRIOB operator. This SRIOB technology is enabled in some uh, network cards and allows you to take one port from one of these. It allows you to take uh, the port, the physical ports of the network card and to virtualize it into different virtual functions. From the point of view of the ports, they see this as a real hardware and you can use these uh, virtual functions to be used unique by each of the pods. So the pods have one CPU only for itself and also it has one of these virtual functions only for itself and remembering that here we don't go through the kernel, we can jump this and go directly to the card using the DPDK technologies. Okay, more or less I'm reaching to the end. So we have this uh, single node OpenSeed and the video profile that I have explained before is one OpenSeed cluster with only just one node that uh, is very prepared at, or is designed to be used for edge uh, at the edge, maybe edge computing <laughs> not, but it's to be used in the edge. Uh, because uh, in this uh, distribution unit uh, we have to deploy hardware that is very confined to very small spaces with very reduced cost, uh, power consumption is very limited, also the network connectivity, etc. And again, uh, single node OpenSIF is optimized about the number of CPUs and RAM that is consumed. Why? Because as less CPUs that are used by OpenSIF and the operating system, this free more CPUs to run, to run the video pods. If each video pod can manage one radio unit and you free more um, CPUs, you can manage at the same time more, more radio units. That is, it's a lot of money for, for, for telcos. So uh, we are also present to even reduce the minimum number of uh, CPUs that we need for running OpenSIF, single node. Uh, okay, so um, when we uh, deploy uh, the single node OpenSIF using some of these tools, zero touch provisioning, uh, Git and, and the GitHub tools, uh, this automatically includes what we want, what we try to make that is a run uh, reference profile with some pre-configuration of this operator, of course the operator, some configuration that can be generic and some other that can be customized depending on, on, on each partner. Uh, also with CDP and GitOps, uh, we can, and the management cluster, we can manage uh, your fleet of clusters uh, in groups, you can do upgrades for a group of clusters, you can do a lot of different uh, management things. What is the video profile? Well, I don't go in detail, but uh, uh, I have a link here about this uh, Git, GitHub repo. This is a list of manifests that by default are always included with a, with a single node OpenSIF. For example, it enables SCTP protocol, which is pretty usual in these cases. It makes some customization about making the server to a startup faster, because in this case you have to reboot if something goes wrong. Uh, you, you have to start up as quick as possible, otherwise you can uh, lost some connectivities. Or we enable kernel dump, or uh, disable, for example, that cryo wipe the partitions with the containers every time that you reboot. If we do that in the single node OpenSIF, each reboot will take a lot of time that is not uh, acceptable. Another kind of uh, customization. And these are the generic, and then we have tools that allow you to customize and configure your, uh, the, the operators or whatever that you have in OpenSIF with what we call policy gen template that again I will explain in the, in the next uh, talk. But okay, this is one example of a performance profile um, a policy gen template that helps you to define this performance profile where you can see that we configure the 
how to point. <laughs> um, you can configure the isolated and reserve uh, different uh, CPUs. Uh, you configure your hub pages and also enable real-time kernel, etc. Whatever of these configuration and policy and templates are managed by the hub cluster and you can decide to which cluster you want to apply the configuration. Okay, some numbers about the scaling and some performance tests because we talk about the scaling a lot. These are some results coming from Red Hat Internal Lab where they are doing a lot of this performing testing with one hub cluster that is basically a compact cluster with three parametal servers. In this world, they always use parametal servers that are okay, pretty performant servers with hundreds of CPU and 500 gigabytes of memory, that this management hub cluster is going to try to deploy a single node OpenShift and to configure the video profile as quick as possible and in a huge quantity. We are going to push to our Git repo uh, 500 SNOs per hour, trying to be deployed during uh, like eight hours with the intention of uh, attempting to reach to 3,672 single node open seat deployed in these eight hours. Okay, it's done 99.7% of the installation, which is I think pretty impressive and only a few less uh, don't reach it to get the DU profile fully configured. Anyways, these are very good results here in this, in this graph. Uh, we can see how each one hour we add new 500 clusters that are installed in this... Uh, ah, okay. These uh, lines uh, tell us that, uh, okay, each hour we have five new uh, single node OpenShift clusters installed and this pink one is the one that installs or configures the video profile. So it's pretty stable about deploying the cluster, about the applying the profile, it's also more or less stable about how many uh, new single nodes OpenShift also contain the the profile. So just uh, ending, um, just some conclusion. Here in the presentation I have focused in the radio unit and the, distribu the distribution unit and the radio access network layer uh, because I think it's uh, in some way different because of the customization that we have to, to include. The distribution unit is implemented with single node OpenShift, with this video RAM profile, with a telco operator and extra configuration, and we can have a management cluster that can do the life cycle management, as we will see later, not only about deploying, but also about doing the configuration and the day one and day two. The same technology on far edge, edge and cloud, and well, we need to provide uh, something, a platform that is scalable and to provide replicability. Okay, so last thing uh, is the different levels of certifications that we have. Uh, vendor validated is, uh, we could say that is, okay, we have made the video running in the, in the cluster, so the vendor can say that is validated. It means it will work in this open scene. What is new now is uh, that we want to provide the Cloud, the CNF Cloud Native Function certification. Cloud, uh, CNF certification don't go into the details if it's working or not. What is testing is that, okay, it works because the vendor says that it works and also we certify that it's using best practices, some security issues and uh, life cycle, etc. So, uh, we can have the platform, the management cluster, the life cycle management, and also the certification that this CNF is going to work and is going to do it following best practices. And that's all for the presentation. If you have questions, I think I go more or less on time. Okay. Uh, you mentioned this for the virtualization, so the IOV 
So, yes. So, so I, it must be the PCI interface. Yes. So I'm just curious which PCI interface it was, uh, PCI Gen 3, 4? Uh, I'm not sure now. Ah, okay, yeah, the question was about the in SRIOB card with a, with a PCI, PCI interface version is using, is using. I fear that I, I'm not sure because there are also because there are many different uh, cards about, uh, about that. But it's true that it's something that we don't usually uh, have uh, problems with that. Scaling down to reduce again the requirements for ah, okay. Okay. I think the question is about how is doing the work of reducing uh, the requirement for the single node open seat to free more hardware for the telcos. Right. Uh, well, I'm not part of the engineering team, so <laughs> I'm not sure how they are doing the magic of going, for example, from eight CPUs to, to, to four CPUs. Uh, but, for example, some of the things that, that is related to the work that we are doing is, well, OpenSIF, it's uh, a platform that is for generic intention. So it, it contains some pieces or operators that maybe are not needed in, 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 the, in, the, in these telco scenarios. But by default, the single node OpenSIF is an OpenSIF uh, uh, cluster. So it contains operators, I don't know, for example, OpenSIF monitoring. Okay? Uh, some of the partners, they don't need or they don't want to have the OpenSIF monitoring because mm, in this scenario, or maybe because they have everything different that they are going to use to use monitoring or because directly they don't want to use monitoring. If something fails, you replace the server, you reinstall, and that's all. So these are the kind of things that uh, we are trying also to, to see, to see how much customizable we can do this, uh, this platform in order to consume less resources. How do we manage? Redundancy? Ah, redundant, okay. Because it's a single node open SIF, there is no redundancy, and uh, um, there is no way of doing. So it's something that is acceptable in the way. Okay, so if you have one distribution unit in one antenna, okay, well, the theory is that you don't have only one antenna in the same area. So if you lost, this uh, distribution unit, in theory, other distribution units that are closer are going to compensate this to don't lost all the connectivity in the devices that you have in the area. So uh, distribution units compensate this failure. And this gives you some time to try to fix it uh, as quick as possible. Also, the management cluster is important in this because uh, we say replicability. Mostly this kind of servers are always the same, so it should be very easy and fast to, and if we are doing GitOps, we delete and we recreate. I think maybe it's okay. Well, I have some more links and well, thank you everyone.